You yourself have the freedom to practice architecture, honestly, wherever the wind takes you. So if you are actually a foreigner to the United States, don't you stress. I've gotten this request and a question a lot. How is a foreigner able to practice architecture within the United States? There are some steps that you must take before you are allowed to legally practice in the United States, and I'm sure the United States does it different than a lot of other countries. One example of this is that each state is going to have its own own licensing requirements so please you know look into those depending on where you want to live in the US. Regardless I have had this question a lot and I hope that this video can really lay out the necessary steps that you yourself have to take in order to legally practice in the United States. You are a student just starting your architecture journey or you have your license in another country but you would like to practice in the United States keep on watching because I do go over everything uh, very briefly and as always I will encourage you to reach out to NCAR NAAB if you have any further questions about this whole process. NCARB is going to be your best resource. This is where I actually found all of the answers to the questions that I have when I was researching for this video. So if you are new to my channel, my name is Natalie. Please hit the subscribe button. Be sure to tap the bell for notifications and it's something small and something free for you to do. Uh, thank you. So without further ado, this is how a foreigner can transition into practicing architecture legally within the United States. Let's just get right into it. Now if you are watching this right now, I'm going to assume that there's going to be three different groups. Group number one is that you are a foreigner and you have completed your educational component somewhere abroad. So you have an architecture degree somewhere outside of the United States. Uh, group number two, you are a foreigner and you have not even began your architecture journey. You have no architecture degree. And group number three is that you actually hold a license in a foreign country and you are interested in transitioning to become a US citizen or just trying to practice here. Regardless, just keep on watching. For the people who have received a architecture degree, outside of the United States, here are the steps to follow. Step number one is that you are going to create a NCARB record. So simply put, NCARB is the National Council of Architectural Registration Boards. It is a nonprofit corporation comprising of legally constituted architectural registration boards of all 50 states, the District of Columbia, Guam, Northern Mariana Islands, and Puerto Rico, and US Virgin Islands. Actually, I just looked it up. So essentially what an NCARB record is, is a paid verified online record of your professional history including your education, experience, and examination details. Step number two is you are going to have to complete an EESA evaluation. This will determine if your education meets NCARB's high standards for architecture and if there are any standard violations or discrepancies, NCARB will email that to you and how you can possibly rectify it. Whether that's going back to school or just taking one class, you are gonna have to complete that educational component. Essentially what they do here is that they will just compare your academic transcript and records to the educational standard for all architects in America that we follow. And it's just going to determine if the education you received abroad in whatever country you're from meets the United States' standards. Once again, if there are any um, issues with this, NCARB will reach out to you. Um, this is a case-by-case -case basis and I have no clue what solutions are going to be. So once again, just please reach out to NCARB. I am not going to know the answer to this. so. Yeah, I'm just gonna save you some time right off the bat. Number three, you must complete a AXP program, which stands for Architectural Experience Program. This is absolutely essential. This is the same thing as holding an internship. It just, it shows you and guides you through the daily realities that a architect faces. You will need 3,740 hours of recorded hours recording your work experience and the program is structured to help better prepare you to become a practicing architect in the United States. It's a good thing, okay? Don't get stressed out. It's a good thing. Number four is you are going to have to pass the ARE, which is the Architecture Registration Examination. So it is a multi-divisional exam. The ARE 5.0 has six divisions right now. And the exam is just used to assess your knowledge of the world of architecture and essential skills needed to actually 
be a practicing architect. So it's gonna test your knowledge on public health and safety, the welfare of occupants in buildings, so on and so forth. As of now, there is about a 50% passing rate. Um, it is a pass-fail test, so be sure to study your behind off for the ARE. They are expensive. It's about $250 per division, per test. So, but it is important that you pass and absolutely necessary. Nobody can get by without passing these tests. Now, it is important to mention that if you received a professional degree from an accredited university or program, the United States might put you on like a fast track. So it's called an accelerated EESA evaluation processing. So once again, email them every case is going to be different. Now moving on to group number two. So if you are an incoming architecture student and you don't have a degree, you have no practice, but you're looking to move to the United States, practice professionally in the United States of America, honestly I would recommend just going to school here. Get a student visa, go to an accredited NAAB university within the United States. Um, NAAB has a search box so you can, you know, go on the website, search whatever school you want. You don't have to go to an ID like I'm going to one. It's just, you know, whatever, whatever you want to accomplish, completely up to you. If you are looking to become a licensed architect within the United States, it probably just makes more sense and easier to transition into becoming a registered architect in the United States if you just do your education here. Now, I am a domestic student. I have never been an international student in my life, so I'm sure there are going to be a bunch of resources out there to help you apply to be be a uh, international student within the United States. Search YouTube, blogs, do your research, always do your research, fact check everything, and yeah, just go from there. But me on my end, I can't help you, that's just my advice. Study in the United States just for an easier transition. And also, as you are studying in the United States, consider taking an IPAL approach to it. Basically, this experience with IPAL allows you to work in the field of architecture also while completing your education component that you need in the United States. Group number three, lastly, if you hold an architectural license and you are professionally practicing in another country, Here's the steps that you can follow if you are interested in practicing professionally in the United States. NCARB honestly offers a bunch of options for you guys. So yeah, so there's a bunch of routes you can go. Uh, no one direction in general is the right one. Just pick the one that works best for you. So to start, if you are a citizen of Australia, Canada, Mexico, or New Zealand, you might be able to pursue an architectural license in the USA through an appropriate mutual recognition arrangement. So contact NCARB. This is going to be a case-by-case -case kind of situation. So any foreign architect can pursue an NCARB certificate by completing the NCARB experience and there's several modules and components. Once you get this experience though from NCARB experience, it doesn't mean you're actually licensed. So it's just going to help guide you to get a license eventually. You will still have to take the exam, but if you've been a practicing architect in a foreign country and they kind of align with NCARB's layout for becoming a practicing architect, the process is probably gonna be quicker for you. The only thing you're really gonna have to do is take the AREs here. 